Welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.4. I'm going to show you how to offload archive data to Spectrum Protect tape pools. I did do another video in which I showed setting up the tape repositories on Spectrum Protect. So we'll go ahead and get started from there. In this case, I'm showing you through the administrator command line how to check that you have the correct domain management class and client node set up. So we're first of all going to do a query domain for an object domain that I know is out there called tap server 03 underscore object domain. And once we see the details on this, we're going to go ahead and query the management class that's associated with that. So we'll go ahead and do a query management class for the standard format equals detailed. From this output, you can see that we do have a management class of type called cold. So the next thing we need to do is register a object client to utilize this new management class and domain. So we'll go ahead and do a register node type equals object client back delete equals yes and domain equals tap servo three underscore object domain. And when this client is registered, it's going to go ahead and provide us with the access details that we need to pass on to Spectrum Protect Plus in order for Spectrum Protect Plus to write to this object storage. So we'll go ahead and copy those details over. So remember, you could have done this in the Spectrum Protect Operations Center, or you could have chosen to do it by the command line. So let's go ahead and get started in Spectrum Protect Plus version 10.1.4. We'll first create a repository server on the Spectrum Protect Plus server. In order to do that, go to System Configurations, Backup Storage, Repository Server. If you already had a repository server set up with the Spectrum Protect to offload to disk storage pool, you can simply update it. We're assuming you don't have one yet. So you will need to give that a name and then enter the host IP address for the Spectrum Protect server as well as the server port. Assuming you haven't already saved the access key to Spectrum Protect Plus, go ahead and give the key a name and then you will paste in the access key and the secret key that you retrieved either from Spectrum Protect Operation Center or the command line. Likewise, for the Spectrum Protect Server Certificate, you can either upload it or use a version that you might have already saved into Spectrum Protect Plus. So we will use the existing version and then go ahead and click register. You get info that the repository server was registered. Click OK. And now you'll see the first Spectrum Protect repository server inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. Next, we'll set up a service level agreement to do the archive to Spectrum Protect tape. So go into Manage Protection, Policy Overview. Click on Add SLA Policy. We'll call this new policy Demo Archive. We'll start by setting up the normal backup policy, which is the operational protection, and we'll take the defaults. We can then choose to replicate it over to a secondary Spectrum Protect Plus server, but this is not mandatory. And if we do, we'll probably give it a different retention period, so we're going to set that up to 30 days. And now we can set additional protection to either the cloud um, out to disk or out to Glacier on the cloud or on Spectrum Protect. So we're going to do a cloud on Spectrum Protect server and that'll be also the tape SRV03 Spectrum Protect server. We'll set the start time. And then for the archive, which is going to be a full backup instead of the incremental like that occurs with offload to cloud or Spectrum Protect disk. We are going to use the main policy destination, not the replication policy, and we will set the target to be tape server on the Spectrum Protect. We'll go ahead and leave the archive to occur once a month. At this point, we're ready to save this service level agreement. So click Save, and you can see it has been successfully created. These will now run at the scheduled times. Now, if you look underneath the service level agreements, you'll see our 
demo archive, which includes replication, offload to the Spectrum Protect disk storage, as well as archive to the Spectrum Protect tape. Okay, I just show you how to create a new SLA. Let me show you how to edit an existing one. Go ahead and click, for instance, on this four hour, click on the edit button. You can see we already have the normal backup, the normal replication, but if we wanted to add in a cloud offload, in this case, we could choose the repository of Spectrum Protect. Remember the offload to cloud or Spectrum Protect disk is incremental versus the archive out to cloud or to Spectrum Protect tape, which is a full. And then if we wanted to add in a archive to tape, and we will choose it to go to the Spectrum Protect server and attached tape drives out there. Okay, we'll go ahead and save that. Let's use this updated SLA to do an on-demand archive to tape. So we'll go into Manage Protection, Hypervisors, VMware. We'll choose this four-hour SLA policy, click the Actions, click Start, click Archive, click OK, and now that for our policy will be archiving off the already backed up files to the Spectrum Protect tape. And remember, this is a full backup that will be sent to tape. And what we're doing under the covers is we're actually creating tar files and retaining the native form of those backups. And then these are being sent out to either the Cloud Glacier or to the Spectrum Protect tape. We can see here in the information that this is offloading to the Spectrum Protect server. Now remember that it will first be written to the cold storage cache on the Spectrum Protect server, and then it will be migrated out to the tape. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that run, and once it's finished, we'll show you how to do a restore. Now that our backup has finished, we are ready to go ahead and show a restore. So go into Manage Protection, Hypervisor, VMware, and we'll click on the Create Restore job in the top right corner. We will enter a name of one of the VMs that we archived out to tape, and we'll select one of those machines. We'll then scroll to the bottom and click Next. For the type of restore, we want it to be on demand. Restoration type, we're doing it from the repository archive, which is the Spectrum Protect tape. We want to use the TAP SRV03 server, and we want to choose this specific restore point. That is the only one we have out there. You could choose to utilize a different vSnap server to act as the cloud cache, or just use the default one. Here we're selecting an alternative vSnap. Go ahead and click Next. And now you have your normal options about data storage networks and the restore method. Optionally, we can enter a new name for the image being restored. Click Next. And after we've reviewed it, we'll go ahead and kick that restore off. Now, all of that's pretty straightforward. What's happening in the background is the Spectrum Protect will take that archive off of tape and restore it back into the cold data cache that's on disk and then stream that back to Spectrum Protect Plus. Now, once it's pulled it back into Spectrum Protect's cold data cache, Spectrum Protect Plus by default will leave it there for three days. If you did want it to be left for a longer amount of time in that cold data cache, then you could go out and set that option. And that option is out in the vSnap system preference files. So if you issue a vSnap system pref git pipe that to archive restore days you can see what it's currently set at and then you could do a set command and set that to something different if you chose okay so with that i showed you how to set up spectrum protect plus to work with spectrum protect as a repository for archiving data out to tape remember that when we archive out to spectrum protect tape. It is a full backup that's being archived out there. That's the same if you archive out to some type of glacier cloud. And when you do the restore from Spectrum
protect tape, it will first of all stage that in the cold data cache, which is disk on Spectrum Protect, and then allow Spectrum Protect Plus to access it from there. Thank you very much.